On a night where order was restored, even if the highest level of confidence was not, the Rangers again rode Igor Shesterkin to become the first team in the NHL to reach 40 wins. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios at the Garden. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. 4 won the final Rangers over the Columbus Blue Jackets. It wasn't as easy as maybe you thought it would be up to nothing, but certainly as rewarding. You know, John, you're trying to look at it from the view of what was this like as a game? How are the players performing and where are we as a team? And as you go through that, I think you start to me with the players and you're saying to yourself, how are we built? What's the roster like? How's everybody performing? Igor's the number one goalie in the NHL over the last month. You start with him. He's got his game back. If there's any great news coming out of this game, he performed at that level again. So he keeps that going, seventh win in a row. Mm -hmm. You look at the defensemen, as a group, they're not giving up a lot. I know that they've given up shots, but there hasn't been a high level of quality in most of the recent games, especially during their streak when they were playing well. And offensively, the defensemen, they have the third most points as a group. So they get a lot of points and they contribute offensively. And the forwards, uh, they have five players with 15 or more goals. So there, there is depth there. You, can't, you can argue that they've got a lot of depth and that is uh, second most amongst all NHL teams. You look at this game, I don't love this game because I'd like them to be in control and have a cruising 5-1 victory going into the third period, but you find yourself in a tough game because Columbus is going to find it a little easier to play better right now because they're out of it. And they're gonna, those games are not easy. So. You know, you're trying to balance all of your thoughts on this game. Even though I didn't love the game, I still do like where they're at. I mean, they're in first place mm -hmm. right now, yep. and we're trying to figure out what they need. And they've built up this credibility to deserve that from President and General Manager Chris Drury. And it certainly was another night where the A-listers performed, especially on the scoreboard. Tops among them, this guy, Artemi Panarin, who opened the scoring in the second period, then added an empty netter, added an assist as well. He's the third Ranger with four 80-point seasons, joining only the Immortals, Mark Messier and Rod Gilbert. He's up to 82 points this season. And Steve, it was his goal that came uh, what, at 7-17 of the second period that gave the Rangers a little breathing room and allowed them to exhale even a little bit. Right, because the push in the first period, it didn't result in any goals. But in the second period, I thought that's where I saw the best second and third effort from the Rangers. The face-off goal that Panarin scores, he battles hard here. You know, he digs in, you need help from your wingers, you have to get in there and you gotta clamp down and get a shot on goal. He surprises Merzlikens, he surprises everybody. He does get a pretty nice bounce here off the referee's skate, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he didn't hustle hard and win his 50-50 battle. And as any centerman will tell you, they rely on the wingers to clamp down, to help out. He got in, he got inside again and made a play. It was a big goal at the time because the Rangers needed to get going at that point. Yeah, it sure was. All right, so Artemi Panarin gives the Rangers the lead. Seven minutes later, the Rangers find themselves on the power play and they're able to cash in from the defenseman who spends so much time on the Ranger power play. We're going to go in the film room, powered by CDW. Steve's going to tell you how Adam Fox reached double figures in goals. Yeah, John, so I talk about these as unsettled plays. You're looking at giveaways, takeaways, 50-50 wins, and it comes off of a four check. And you're trying to always force them into mistakes. Now, even if Kreider can't get there to get it quickly, he still puts pressure on. This is important because you're still forcing the Columbus Blue Jackets to make a play, and they fumble it. And now you can see how Panarin and Fox recognize this. They reroute themselves because there's an opportunity for offense. And how smart is Kreider here not to just take the semi breakaway, but look for the second wave of offense, makes the goalie move, he can't step out to the top of the crease, and the upper part of the net is available. Why? Because Fox is so brilliant that he can see the upper part of the net. But all of that puck movement, to me it's always about not allowing the goaltender to lock on you and get half of a second or more of clear view on the puck. His positioning was compromised there because Kreider makes a really smart pass. Yeah. And, you know, like, I'm telling you, if Kreider just takes to the net there, that's an easy save for Merzlikens. It's not, it's not a high-danger play, but 
Kreider wasn't conflicted with where the best opportunity came from there. I thought that was well played. All right, so the Rangers win it 4-1 the final. Two goals tonight for Artemi Panarin, 34 and 35 on the season. Let's go inside the Rangers dressing room. Michelle Jingris is there. Artemi Panarin speaking with the help of an interpreter. Win the last 11 games or 11 wins the last 10 games. Can you talk about the, the feeling in the room right now? Все отлично, понятное дело, столько выигрышей, один проигрыш только, поэтому в целом говорили об этом, чтобы сегодня сыграть лучше, чем прошлую игру, вернуть должок Коламбусу, поэтому все получилось, все хорошо. Yeah, it was definitely an excellent feeling uh, coming back after you know having only one loss and so many wins. Conversation in the locker room was definitely to get back after the last game and return the debt to Columbus. Your line, we've talked a lot about it this season, but even the first period, it felt like you guys had a lot of chances. I mean, do, do you guys, how would you describe the way that you try to come out every night and, and produce offense for this team? I думаю, в целом мы разговариваем до игры часто, чтобы стараться подойти в правильном настрое быть достаточно голодным до игры и я думаю это помогает. The conversation before the game is definitely mostly about having the right mindset and being hungry enough to really chase them out there. What was different, or tell me about tonight versus when you played them last on Sunday? Two points. What do you like about your game tonight? Ну понятное дело, что немножко нас привели в себя после прошлой игры, но ну, мы там были в целом уставшие. Не, не могу сказать, что ребята не старались. Я думаю, это хоккей, тут сложно что-то одно найти. The coach definitely tried to whip us back into shape after after Sunday, but then again, this is hockey. We were definitely a little bit tired, and it, it's hard to single something specific out. What do you think of? Oh. Sorry, Molly. What do you think of Igor's play tonight, especially at the end there for you guys? Сделал хорошие сейфы, как обычно, поэтому красавец. Все рады за него. Good saves from him as usual. He's doing good, and we're all proud of him. By the way, Artemi Panarin leaned over to me after that empty net goal and said, we don't have to be scared anymore. I guess he meant the fact that there was still a game until he dunked that one in from about 150 feet away. Good to hear from Artemi Panarin after the game. You heard him there talk about Igor Shesterkin. And, of course, he is the focus of our Liberty Mutual crease coverage because that's now four straight games where he's allowed only one goal, Steve. He has a 975 save percentage in the last four games. It's 149 out of 153 stopped. He is so back. sharp, yeah. so back, yeah. right? And look, I joked about, not joked, I was pretty serious about him having to get mad a little bit and then being able to feed off that energy. It's, it's a negative energy that you can channel into your game. And I, I think it's really tightened his focus because he is back to that same level of compete and now the talent and the skill just shows up. You can see that he's not looking for saves anymore. Everything's very controlled. He's playing his system. If not for a couple of giveaways behind the net, which is very uncharacteristic for him, he would not have had a goal against. He would have had a shutout. He looked that sharp on all of the saves that he was lined up for. He was locked in and locked on, and he's right back to where you expect him to be. And look, that's the best news because you still have some runway here. You've got all of March and half of April before the postseason begins, and you're not biting your nails a little bit waiting for him to find his game. Yeah. You know, the games are over now as far as the fun and games. It's like, just let Igor go, and um, he can play a run of games, and you don't have to wor work to search for it anymore. He can just be prepared and get himself ready to go. For sure. Seven straight wins now, 26 wins in all on the season. Jacob Truba was the focus of our MSG Spotlight, presented by Chase throughout the course of the night, and he ended up being a third star in tonight's 4-1 win. Let's hear from the captain after the game. I blame fatigue, but I think the travel, the back to back, a lot of games. I think today we were, we were a little bit more, more fresh. I think our, our brains were a little sharper. Um, our legs were moving a little faster. I thought we played more, more of the game that we, we want to play. Is it? I mean, it's important to get a win, but I wonder if it's also important for you to realize, like, okay, you didn't like the game, and it was a quick self correction. That's what you guys were doing earlier in the season too. Yep. You know, I think that's that's kind of what you have to do all year long. You're, you're going to have games that. Or their schedule or whatever, maybe you just don't play play your best or have your best game that night. Um, be able to turn the page, reset, and, and have the confidence, in, I guess, of the group in here that, that we know how to play and we know how to play to win hockey games. Um, 
and just having that ability to have a short memory and, and turn the page and start fresh, new game. Got a little practice, got a day off. I think we, we were all feeling a little bit better mentally and physically. And uh, when I come out and play a good game at home, I thought we did. Is that even having that same mindset just down the stretch in the third period to be able to close this one out the way that you did? Yeah, I think I mean, we gave up gave up some shots, but not. Uh, there was a couple of good opportunities, but for the most part, shots that Igor, Igor can handle. Um, yeah, I thought, thought we were good. Got in the lock and kind of made him four stumps and did, did a pretty decent job of breaking pucks out and uh, got a chance with, uh, with the empty net and guys scored some goals. After the way that you guys turned things around in January, you're now sitting atop the NHL. Just what's the feeling in the room right now going to the final stretch? Good. Keep continuing to build our game. I think um, obviously we have, we have bigger goals that we want to accomplish, but uh, just continue to build the confidence, the, the confidence in how we play, the confidence as a group. Um, we haven't gotten to where we want to be, and it's, it's a building process, and it's not, uh, it's not going to win every game from here on out probably either. So there's going to be some ups and downs, and just kind of continue to build our game going into, going into the playoffs. It's meaningful at all to you, even for a night, that you're the first team to 40 wins this season? Um, yeah, I heard Mumbling's first Rangers team in the fastest in history to get the 40 wins. You guys might want to fact check that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely definitely an accomplishment. But like I said, just continue to, to build our game. There's no real trophies handed out right now. <laughs> so it's great, but who really cares? <laughs> There's so much support from these fans for Rempe so quickly. What do you think they saw in him right away? <laughs> what everybody saw, I think uh, the willingness, the toughness, the competitiveness, um, the young guy who, who got his opportunity to come play, and he's making an impact. Um, for me, watching him, I mean, it, it gets me excited. It gets everyone in the room, I think, a little excited. Obviously, got the fan base pretty excited. Um, but it's good. I mean, those are, those are the kind of guys you want to have on your team and you want to go to battle with. An assist, two blocks, three shots on goal, 22 minutes, a third star for Jacob Truba. Follow MSG Networks on X and vote on your Montefiore Einstein Rangers Player of the Week. Rangers even in points now with the Canucks atop the NHL standings. Now 83 points after a 4-1 win over the Blue Jackets.